Welcome back to Africa 54. I'm Vincent McCory in Washington. Now, scientists have managed to wipe out a population of mosquitoes in a laboratory using a type of genetic engineering known as a gene drive. The intervention prevented the females from reproducing and caused the entire population to die off. Scientists hope the method can be transferred from the lab to the real world to tackle mosquito populations that spread diseases like malaria, as Henry Ridgewell reports. Mosquitoes spread malaria that kills an estimated 429,000 people every year, many of them children. So this new method of killing mosquito populations has sparked huge interest. Scientists from Imperial College London managed to eliminate a population of breeding mosquitoes in a laboratory using a gene drive. Professor Andrea Crisanti co-led the research. The, the gene drive is, uh, is, a, is a technical solution that allows a genetic modification to be spread from few individuals to an entire population. That modification involved disrupting a gene that determines sexual differentiation. So in this way, a genetic female, if you destroy this gene, cannot develop into a female, but develop in something between a male and a female that we call intersex. These individuals cannot bite, so which is very good, cannot lay egg, and so it cannot reproduce itself. That inability to reproduce spread across the mosquitoes, and the entire population died off within 11 generations. The big question is whether that success can be replicated outside the laboratory. We have already done, we have moved this mosquito in large confined space which mimic completely the tropical environment. Then after this is completed, this phase will also be crucial to gather a lot of information for regulatory purpose, for example about safety, stability, ability of the gene drive to move across the species. Scientists say reassuring the public about the safety of this powerful technique is paramount. It's hoped the gene drive can be tested in the wild within five to ten years. New tools in the fight against malaria are urgently needed, as the World Health Organization says global progress against the disease is stalling. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News, London. E-commerce businesses are springing up in Somalia more than ever before as measures to increase access in the Horn of Africa country increases but despite few internet users and a slow internet speed. Entrepreneurs are positioning themselves for opportunities that the future holds. Take a look. Safiya Ahmed a member of staff of a university in Mogadishu is busy on her computer buying a blender from an e-commerce store. This is not common in Somalia, which has one of the lowest internet penetration rates globally, unlike in many parts of the world. But developments in recent years, such as the launch of fiber optic services in 2014, have given rise to new online customers and businesses. Today, people know how to order goods through online markets, and they even shop online overseas. As you know, internet use in Somalia used to be very low because not everyone could get access. But now everyone can get internet via mobile, at home and elsewhere. So Somali online businesses will be successful in the near future. Somalia has some of the slowest internet speeds compared to countries like Singapore. But this does not deter online retailers like Sumer, which offers all sorts of products, from electronics to food, and even travel tickets on their website. But there are bigger challenges. The infrastructure of the main cities of Somalia and most of the roads were broken in the war, and our delivery cars and motorbikes struggle to get to a place. In some cases, there is no home or postal address for you to follow when someone orders goods online. We waste a lot of time to get the right directions to a client's home, and we spend more money calling clients via our cell phone to get his home. The firm says it makes more than 25,000 sales transactions every month, despite growing competition as more customers come on board. However, some Mogadishu residents are not keen on online shopping 
preferring to stick to shopping in person. Um, technology at market. When reliable, high-speed internet will come. People will order goods online for delivery to their homes. But for now, online shopping does not work in Somalia. Sumar was the first e-commerce business established in Somalia. According to Somalia's Ministry of Posts, Telecommunications and Technology, just 1.88% of Somalis use the internet as of 2016. Well, Malawi continues to struggle to develop its tourism industry despite having several attractions, including national parks, game reserves and mountains. But the government has developed a tourism strategic plan that seeks to address challenges to attracting more to uh, tourists. Let me consider reports on Malawi's efforts to develop the industry after attending a recent tourism street carnival in the country's commercial capital, Blantyre. The day-long event was part of activities to raise awareness for World Tourism Day on September 27 and promote Malawi tourism. Tourism operators set up pavilions to showcase their products and services for tourists. We can't tell um, uh, a foreign tourist about Malawi if ourselves we don't know what Malawi has to offer as regards uh, tourism. So we want to promote domestic tourism and thereby it will also lead to an improvement in the foreign tourism as well. But tourism is largely hampered by Malawi's poor air transport infrastructure, according to a World Economic Forum report on travel and tourism. It ranks Malawi among the worst in the world at 126 of 141 economies it surveyed on tourism competitiveness. But Malawi authorities say they are working on a new tourism strategic plan that seeks to address that. It has pointed out on airports that need attention. Our big airport, Lidongwe or Kamuz International Airport, needs a, a attention. Luckily, government is expanding that uh, um, uh, airport. The government also supports the animal welfare charity African Parks in its drive to restore animals like elephants cheetahs and lions to various national parks in the country and it has responded to calls from tourism operators to reduce the 75 US dollars visa fee it introduced three years ago on tourists from countries that require Malawians to pay visa fees. The tourism operators say the higher fee causes some of tourists to skip Malawi as a destination affecting their business. The visa fee will be reduced from 75 to 50, which is in much in line with what our colleagues in Zambia or, or Zimbabwe and other Tanzania are charging so that we, we can level the, the playing field. Tourism operators are pleased. It shows that the government is committed. People, all the stakeholders in, uh, in the industry are committed and they are happy that you know, we'll be having now more tourists coming in. Government authorities say these actions could boost Malawi's GDP by 7.7% this year. Lamek Masina for VOA News, Blanta. Well, and that's our show for today. You can find all the continent's top news and world news online at VOA News at VOAAfrica.com. I'm Vincent McCauley in Washington. And Noa Godot has our last word from Lagos. Thanks a lot, Vincent. We look forward to bringing you another show next week. ChannelTV.com is your source for news, sports, and other programming. I'm Anne Wawadu. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.